Hello, everybody, and welcome back to N90X. I'm your host, Joe Moses, and today I want to talk to you about configuring iSCSI on your FreeNAS server and connecting it up to your ESX host. So check it out. I've logged into my FreeNAS server, and I'm going to go to storage first, okay? Now, here's my pool. Now, obviously, I've already done this, but I'm going to walk you through the steps. You've got to come to your pool and create a iSCSI volume. Basically, you're creating a Z pool. So you select on your pool and click down here, create Z volume. Okay. What you can do, here's, here's my Z volume. I'm going to see if I can edit it. Edit. You're basically just going to give it a size. Uh, I have a total storage available of about 600 gigs. I'm going to give it 300 gigs, so 300 and a capital G. Okay? If you're creating a new one, let's see if that looks anything... Oops, cancel. See if that looks anything different. Yeah, you're going to give it a name. Give your Z volume a name. So in my case, I called it iSCSI VOL. Give the size of the volume, and there's some examples here. One G G I B for gigabyte. And leave everything else the same. Click on Add Z Volume, okay? Now, once you've got that Z Volume, and I think this is a step that a lot of people don't do, you're really, really good to go. So the next thing we want to do is go to Services, ensure that iSCSI is turned on. Since Again, since I've already done this, it's already on. But yours would have been off, so just click on it so it turns it on. And then click on this little wrench to the right of that. Now, we're going to go through step by step. We don't have to do anything on global target configurations, but we have to go to portals. Okay? And basically, on here, you're just going to accept the defaults. The address is going to say 0000, and the port, the default port is 3260. We're just going to say OK, and it's going to create this portal. Okay? The next thing we want to do is go to initiators. We're just going to go step by step pretty much through this configuration. On initiators, again, you're going to click on add initiator and you're going to accept the default. It's going to say all, all. Okay? That's the second step or the third step. And now the next step is you're going to go to authorize access. Now, here, I created a user called ESXi. You can call it whatever you want, but just write it down and write down a password. This is a secret that's going to be exchanged between the FreeNAS iSCSI service and your ESXi iSCSI host adapter. Okay, write this stuff down so you don't forget it. I created a user and a password, and I believe the password has to be at least 9, nine to 12 characters long. Okay. Once you've created authorized access, that's great. Next thing we want to do is go to targets. Under targets, you're going to give it a name. I call it iSCSI target. My portal group pops up. I got one. Initiator group is, is one. Author authentication method is going to be CHAP. Okay. Authentication group number is one. Because that's what I that's what I have. If I were to create a new one here. You'd see the same thing. Give it a name, right? I have portal group one, which I created earlier. Initiator group one. Authentication method is going to be chap. Authentication group number is going to be one because that's all I have, okay? I only have one of those. Now, you can go to extents. You're going to add an extent. Give it a name. It's going to be device. The device is already in use. I think the device is already in use. Hang on. What do I have here? You're going to give it a name. You're going to select device. Serial number will automatically pop up. You will then pick your iSCSI volume, which we created in the very first step. Okay? Leave the other stuff in the default settings and click OK. OK? 
Now, associate targets. You have your extent, you have your iSCSI target. You're going to create a, you're going to select from the drop down iSCSI target. The extent is iSCSI extent. And you're going to click OK. If I were to click on this new, you see it would be the same thing. Since those are already in use, but I could iSCSI target, iSCSI extent, and click OK. And that, that's all you have to do on the free NAS side. You've now created an iSCSI share, in this case, 300 gigabytes worth of storage. Now, let's minimize this. Oh, it's down here. The next thing we're going to do is go to our ESXi server. I'm running VMware Fusion over here. Now notice, I'm able to connect directly from Fusion on my Mac to my ESXi infrastructure. Now how do you do that? Just in case you don't know, if you're running VMware Fusion 7 and higher, you can click on here under File, Connect to Server, punch in the IP address of your ESX server, put in your username and password, click on Remember Password, and you'll have access to it here. What's great about this is you could view from here. You could start and do a lot of things right from this VMware Fusion console. Okay. Now, I already have the virtual machine running. Let me pull it over here and go full screen. Okay. So I'm, I'm on a uh, Windows 7 client, but I have the... VMware vSphere client running. Make sure you select that server. Go into configuration. Go into network adapters. Oh, sorry. No, go into storage adapter. Go into go into storage adapters. Now, you should see towards the bottom iSCSI software adapter and it's probably disabled. You want to right click on it, click on properties and under configure you want to enable it. Okay? Once it's enabled, you can then go into dynamic discovery, click on add and type in the IP address of your FreeNAS server. In my case, it was it's 10.0.1.60. Okay, so you're going to put in your IP address here. The standard port is 3260. You're going to keep that. And you're going to put in the CHAP authentication. Here you're going to put in the initiator name. Hang on. Let me uh, settings. Chap. Yeah, here you're going to put in use chap. Give it the name. Well, we gave this particular one, we gave it ESXi and the secret. Type it in. For mutual chap, we're not going to use chap. Click OK. And close it up. Now, once you do that for the dynamic discovery, static discovery should find the full target name, which is your the universal URL, whatever you want to call it, for iSCSI, the iSCSI naming convention here, colon, and the name that we gave it, iSCSI target is what we gave it. You should see that. So, the dynamic discovery is what you put in. Static discovery will automatically find it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything for network configuration or general. When you're done with that, close it out. And then we're going to go to storage. Now, it'll take about a minute or so, depending upon how fast your system is. And the data store will then appear. It'll appear here. Okay. Once it appears here, you're good to go and you can now utilize it. Now, one thing you can do very easily is go into your, this is the data store that's local. I can right click on here, click on browse data store. I can pick one of my virtual machines 
this PF, PFS sense is very small. I can say copy it, close the window, go to my iSCSI data store, browse data store, and I can paste it here. Right click over here and paste it. And it will paste it now to my iSCSI data store. And you can see this pretty small, pretty small image. It says it'll take about two minutes to copy over. Okay. Let it, let it go ahead and copy over. Now, I already copied over uh, a Netscaler image and a Windows 2000 server image to the iSCSI data store. Copy is continuing right here. So now, now that I've copied something over, let's go ahead and see if we can fire it up. That concludes our lesson on how to configure iSCSI on FreeNAS and connect it to your ESXi server. Essentially, if you're connecting to Zen server or any other virtualization system, the process will be similar as long as you have an iSCSI initiator on that device. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.